In this video, I'm going to go through and reinforce some of the concepts as far as starting out with and linking to different types of style sheets. Now, before we get in too deep, there are three places that you can write cascading style sheets. The first being directly in line, the second being within the head tag, and the third being an external CSS document. Each of these has their pros and cons, but as you begin to work with larger websites, really you're going to be shifting over to external style sheets. However, there is something to be said as far as having either styles in the head tag or styles in line. Both of these elements actually work very well if you only have a single page website and you don't want to have any additional sub pages. Now, to show you as far as the organization that I do whenever I'm working with CSS, if you notice under projects here, I have the folder for the website and then I have the index document here that you can see the preview of over here. I've already signed some font families and colors so that we can work with this. But notice I have a CSS folder where I contain my local or external CSS document. It's local to my website, but external to the HTML document. So to begin, the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is this H1 tag here, where I actually changed the font family and the color as far as style is concerned. This is an example of an inline style declaration. If you notice here, as far as the website is concerned, notice it's changed the font family to Arial and the color to blue. However, one of the things that I wanted to emphasize, whenever you're doing a design like this and you're working between the three different levels as far as working with cascading style sheets, one of the things to point out is as far as the overwriting of style declarations. So to give you an example here, Notice, I declare color blue here. However, if we come under the style tag here, as far as style slash style in the head tag, you'll notice I have another H1 declaration assigned to the H1 tag that has the color aqua assigned to it. If I decided to actually divide this page up, and let's say for the second one here, for my second paragraph, I put an H1 before it, and I say, this is about us and I add that in. Notice what happens here. Notice how because I do not have that direct inline style assigned to the document to the first or to the second H1, notice what it's doing is it's defaulting out to the color aqua. Additionally, I don't actually have a font family assigned to that external style in the head tag, so therefore it's using the web page default. Now, we can actually take this one step further and the last level is the external style sheet, which you can see here on line six. I want to really emphasize this to everybody because normally this is a question that I get quite frequently from people, is why aren't my styles working? I wrote them in my style sheet. I know the declarations are correct. Even I forget sometimes to put my links of my style sheets into my HTML document. So this should be the first thing you check if you're getting errors as far as your HTML and CSS declarations are concerned make sure that you have linked the external CSS document. Now again, I'm using a relative path here where I'm pointing into the CSS folder and I'm calling on my CSS.CSS. If we actually come out here and take a look at this, you can see that I have a couple of declarations, but notice once again here, I have an H1 with a different color assigned. This is showing as far as the level of overwrite that you will get between the three different levels of cascading style sheets. So the closer that a style declaration is to the HTML element or class, the more strength it's going to have. So that's why the blue is overwriting the aqua, which is overwriting the purple. So for instance here, if I actually came in here and got rid of aqua, you can actually see on my preview now how this has changed over and it's made it into that dark purple color. So now I'm stepping up from the inline style and it's defaulting all the way out to the external style sheet. So keep that in mind whenever you're working between different types of cascading style sheets. However, I will say this, normally it's rare that we're actually going to have things like the three levels of style sheets working simultaneously together. I'd strongly encourage you, if you're going to work with one, commit to it. And honestly, if you're going to commit to one, commit to an external style sheet. 
This way then, if you have multiple web pages, you can then have one place to edit the cascading style sheet declarations and then just link it into each subsequent web page. This could be five web pages, this could be a hundred web pages. So that's probably the biggest benefit and why so often in more modern HTML and web design, you see us using external CSS. The last item to talk about that also was mentioned as far as our textbook is concerned is talking about class declarations. The examples that I've demonstrated here assign specifically to an HTML tag, but maybe I actually want to leave the HTML tags alone and instead edit based on other elements here. I don't want every paragraph tag to be Verdana and have the color green. So how can I actually go through and change overall? So that actually brings us to a class declaration. Class declarations are CSS uh, declarations that can be used numerous times so long as they are assigned to a specific HTML element. So here, for example, in the external CSS document, you can see I've made a class declaration called important. The biggest giveaway in CSS that this is a class is the dot in front of the word important. However, for a class declaration, it's just like if you were working with an HTML element. You're still going to open and close with your curly braces and have the subsequent element declarations inside those curly braces. Now, to actually assign it to an element though, I would need to come in now and actually add class equals and the name of the class. This is another spot to pay close attention to. I often get a lot of questions or my CSS isn't working and I've checked to make sure that the external style sheet is correct. You need to make sure that how you wrote your class name is identical to whenever you're calling it between the quotes. So if I were to come in here, for instance, and let's say I capitalize the P by accident, you see how I've lost that red text within my HTML document. I change it back to important and now it pops back up again. So I could actually change this too though, even though I assign this class to a span tag, I could actually come down to this paragraph and I could completely override the paragraph if I do class equals and I say important. And you can see how that subsequent paragraph changes and the class overrides as far as the general declaration here that I have in styles. So hopefully that clarifies a little bit more as far as the different elements whenever you're starting to work with cascading style sheets. Here, we, this becomes very important. Although this is nice for layout and design, this becomes much more important whenever we start structuring websites and using other elements such as div tags to actually position your elements in your HTML document.